What's the most compelling paranormal thing you've experienced and how's it changed your worldview? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. I was at a bar about 8 years ago, had a pretty good buzz going, and I walked down the hallway to the restroom, and around the corner comes a little boy. He was maybe 6 or 7, he had on black pants and a white button-down shirt, and he had short dark hair. Now it's 1 in the morning, and there's a little kid in the bar. He stopped when he saw me and just looked at me. I said, hey buddy, are you here with someone? And he got this really shocked look on his face and vanished. Like he didn't move, he disappeared. However, as I mentioned, I'd been drinking, so I just blew it off. Cut to six months later, I started bartending at that bar. I was working day shift, and when the owner came in at 4 p.m., I told him that I didn't know there was an apartment above the bar, and it must stink to have to listen to the bar all night, especially with little kids. He asked me what the hell I was talking about. I told him I'd been listening to the kids upstairs playing and laughing and running around all day. He walked me up to the second floor. It's not an apartment. It's a huge, empty room. One night I was closing the bar at 3.30 in the morning, and I went to the bathroom before I left. I was the only one there, and the doors were locked. I hear knocking on the bathroom door and a little kid giggling. No one was there when I opened the door. That Christmas, I bought a rubber ball, a toy truck, and a doll and left them upstairs in the empty room. For the next several months, I would hear the ball bouncing across the wooden floor upstairs while I was working. It made me smile. They were just kids, at least they finally had some toys. My grandma's boyfriend passed away, and my mom and I traveled to Florida to help her make the arrangements. My grandma had a two-bedroom condo in a gated community, so my mom took the second bedroom and I took the couch. I woke up at 4.19 am and heard old-timey music. I figured my grandma was awake early and tried to go back to sleep. Then I heard shuffling down the hall. I figured my mom was going to the bathroom. But then I heard someone sigh and sit down in the leather recliner next to the couch that he always sat in. I immediately knew it was him. Later in the day we visited his kids, not related to us, and my mom kept trying to get me to tell his oldest daughter. I told my mom I didn't want to upset her. She overheard and asked me to tell her, so I explained what happened. Her eyes got all wide, and she looked at her husband. Apparently her husband woke up in the middle of the night, looked straight at her, and told her her father was there and that he was okay. That wasn't my first experience with the paranormal, but certainly one I could never forget. I managed to work at two haunted movie theaters. The first theater I worked at was a decently old building. I started working there during the summer, and my friend got me the job. During the summer day shifts, we would usually have three people working the ticket booth and concession stand, and having no customers was pretty common if no good movies were released that week. One of my first shifts was with my friend who got me the job and a woman who I'll call Jerry for the story. Since we were absolutely dead and had a lot of downtime since all the movies were showing, Jerry decided to take a nap in one of the empty theaters that had no customers. My friend and I stayed behind the concession stand just in case any customers came in and to talk about video games and nonsense. Jerry goes to theater too. We were talking for about 15 minutes when Jerry came out of theater. Too pissed off and told us to stop messing with her and that she was really tired and just wanted to sleep. I tell her that we were out here talking the entire time and that no one went into the theater. She doesn't believe us and just tells us to let her sleep. She goes back into the theater. About 20 minutes later, she comes out again, pissed off, and yells at us to stop shaking the back of the seat she was sleeping in. She said that it felt like someone grabbed her seat and shook it with all their force. We told her again that it wasn't us, and she decided not to go back into the theater she was sleeping in. After that, my co-workers told me rumors about the theater being haunted. Usually, some nonsense about murders that happened there a long time ago or a dead body found in the bathroom. Of course, there was no evidence to back that up, but it was fun to talk about. Occasionally you had the feeling of being watched while cleaning theaters, but that seemed expected since you're in these giant dark rooms. However, the experience that I had while opening made me believe that the theater was haunted. I was working an opening shift, where it's just you and the manager. These usually happened on weekdays when we knew we were going to be slow. All three managers of the theaters were known for being late for a variety of reasons. The head manager was just lazy and smoked a lot of weed. The other manager had to take the bus, which was always unpredictable. 
and the third manager really didn't have an excuse for being late, but since the other two were always late, it seemed okay. Because they were always late, we had the idea of giving a key to the restaurant next door so that the worker who had to open could get into the building without having to wait for the manager. When I arrived, I got the key next door, opened the door, and went inside. When opening, the first thing you had to do was turn the lights on the electrical room. To get to the electrical room, you had to get through a door with a keypad. When you opened that door, there was a staircase that led to the manager's office. To the left, on the bottom of the stairs, was the electrical room. I opened the door and saw that the manager's office door was closed, so I went into the electrical room and turned the lights on. As I'm leaving the electrical room, I hear from the manager's office, Hey yo, what's good? It sounded like my manager with a very deep distinct voice, and that's how he always greeted me. I yelled back up, you knew I was opening, why didn't you keep the door open for me? And I went about my opening duties. I just finished making the popcorn when my manager walks in and says, Hey yo, sorry I'm late. I told him, when did you sneak out? He asked me what I was talking about, and I told him that I heard him upstairs before. He then tells me that his bus was 40 minutes late and he just got here. He made me go upstairs with him to check that no one was hiding up there. There wasn't anyone there. I worked at that theater for about two years before the company decided to close it down because the building owner wanted to raise the rent. They transferred all the workers to other nearby theaters, and I was transferred to a theater that was in the town over. I knew the theater, and I knew that the theater was old, very old. So old that it was grandfathered in with not being handicap accessible for some of the theaters. My first day there, I was asked to clean one of the upstairs theaters. Being the new guy, I obviously said yes and went up there to clean it. The theaters were small enough that one person could clean them on their own. I go up to this theater, and as soon as I walk in, I feel that I am in danger. I check the aisles to make sure that everyone left and that no one was hiding in there to try to sneak a second free movie or worse. It was empty, but the feeling of being in danger never left. As I was cleaning, I had a feeling that there was something in there watching me, and I knew where it was. It was in the back corner of the theater, where the light didn't illuminate it. I felt as if it was watching me and was waiting for me to get distracted so it could push me down the stairs in the theater. I quickly cleaned the theater as fast as I could and got out of there. Every single time I went into that theater, I had the same feeling. That it was watching me in the corner and wanted to hurt me. Eventually, I told my co-workers that I couldn't clean the theater by myself and that someone needed to come with me. Surprisingly, everyone was fine with this. The thing that really sold this for me was that a worker who was away at college came home for the summer and started picking up shifts at the theater. I never met him before, but the first shift that he came back for, he went to the same theater to clean it and came back down two minutes later and told us that he wasn't cleaning the theater because he felt that someone was watching him, and he didn't get paid enough to deal with demons. After that, my co-workers told me stories about their experiences. One manager saw a little girl in the stock room. Another heard voice coming from the stock room. Another saw the bathroom stall doors swing and slam open by themselves. Another would see people sitting in the seats in the theater who would disappear when they blink. A closing manager heard footsteps and laughter in the lobby hours after we closed. No one knew why exactly, but we figured that the building was so old, some people must have died there. I haven't really ever told anyone this story, and I guess it's kind of cathartic. A bit of background first, my six-month-old nephew Ken, not his real name, died of SIDS when I was 11. It was the first time I'd experienced the death of a loved one, and while it affected me for years. It was also the catalyst for me becoming an atheist because it basically took away my ability to believe in any kind of constructive metaphysical power. The rest of my family would often talk about how Ken had come to them in dreams or left them signs, for example, his favorite song playing on the radio, his mom spoke to psychics who claimed they could sense his presence, etc. What I'm saying is that they were all open to the idea that he still existed on some plane, but I couldn't get any comfort from that because my reality was that he was dead and gone. Anyway, cut to my 20s and a few other loved ones die, and generally my life is in a pretty crazy place for other reasons, and one night on my own I was feeling utterly hopeless. I had begun self-injuring at that point, but that was my last coping mechanism I had left, and tonight it wasn't making a difference. I actually really strongly considered for the first time that there might not actually be a way out of this constant misery. Then completely out of nowhere, I absolutely felt Ken's presence and the unconditional love that babies give you. 
It scared the hell out of me because it was honestly a physical sensation of someone being in the room with me. Mental illness runs in my family, and I thought now I was schizophrenic on top of everything else. I 100% knew it was Ken though, and feeling that he loved me made me think there had to be something in me worth loving, so I had to keep going till I found it because that's what would save me. To this day, I have no idea what happened that night. I have never felt anything like it in the 20 or so years since then, and I know I wasn't consciously thinking about him beforehand. It's entirely possible my subconscious just concocted the whole thing as a Hail Mary, and that's obviously the more likely answer, but I can't shake how utterly certain I was that it was him. I didn't have to convince myself of it because he was just there. I have had other random spooky stuff or weird coincidences come up through my life, but that night is the only time that it genuinely felt like a supernatural thing had happened to me. Friend always said he had a haunted house in adjacent woods and said some wild stories that I never seriously thought to be true. During a sleepover, he commented on seeing floating balls of light. I was the only one up when everyone went to bed, then felt weird and looked into the dining room. I saw a floating ball of light, which then rapidly expanded without a single sound and briefly blinded me. It expanded slower than light should have. I have no idea what it was. Some kind of phenomenon maybe? It mostly made me consider all the other stories he said that were much more extreme, like weird cryptids in the forest. He never said them in a manner that seemed joking or the like, just idle information. Didn't change much. My other paranormal experience happened when I was so young, the memory is much less reliable, although it was a lot more extreme. So way back in 2004, I was living with my grandparents after moving to their city. I have a large family, and many of my cousins have lived with them at some point. My grandparents were well off financially and lived in a large 100 plus year old house, so space and money weren't an issue. Anyway, at that point I had a job with a large retail company that involved travel, lots of it. Trips lasted from several weeks to months gone. I basically left my stuff at my grandparents while I was gone. On this particular trip, I was heading home from Ohio with a layover in Texas. I had this overwhelming need to call my grandparents to remind them I was coming home, but this trip involved an 80-hour work week, not including the flight time, so I never made the call. When we landed in Texas, I had 45 missed calls and voicemails on my phone, all from family. My grandfather had killed himself in the backyard, about 45 minutes after I had decided not to call. I stumbled out of the plane and proceeded to put down shots until the bartender cut me off. A co-worker found me and made sure I got on the plane. My parents picked me up once I got home. I told my grandma I would stay as long as she wanted. I was due to move into an apartment in three weeks after that trip. That night after she went to bed, I went into the room the family referred to as the red room, as at one point it had this red flocked wallpaper above the wood paneling. This room is where my grandfather spent most of his time. It had a fireplace next to where he would sit and read. He was a voracious reader and only would sit in his chair. So I sat in a rocking chair across from where he would sit, and I bawled for hours. I talked to him like he was there. When I got up to go to bed, I stood up and touched his chair. It was warm, as if someone was sitting there for hours. Now mind you, this is a leather chair, and it was warm in the area where he would have sat only. Other parts were cool to the touch, as you would expect. I had massive guilt for years for not calling, and to this day, I cannot explain why the seat was warm. There is no logical explanation. I worked security for a local security company that was just starting up and specialized in monitoring heavy levy equipment out in the orchards. I had no radio, no gun, no mace, no flashlight, and no phone service. I was strictly there to monitor and take notes, but if anything did happen, the nearest help was 30 to 45 minutes away in town. Fast forward to a few weeks of night shifts along the levee with it being surrounded by orchards, and I was pretty comfortable at my new location with its one road in and one road out as the only entrance for a few miles. It was about 2.30 in the morning when I heard an alarm clock going off somewhere in the murky darkness. I'm positioned alongside the levee in this position, O plus O, with my car being the O on the right, the levee is the plus, and the alarm sound coming from the O on the left. I turn my car on and drive over the levee to where the workers had a portable office container with a few chairs and a table set up and where it sounds like the alarm is coming from. As my dim high beam started to sweep across the orchard, I saw a dark figure multiple rows back seeming to fade behind a tree quickly. I stop there and stare into the darkness barely disrupted by my posse car's headlights. Nothing moves, 
and I can hear the alarm still going off, so I get out of my car and, using my phone's light, find the culprit sitting upon a white plastic table. A single small square battery-powered alarm clock was singing away as my brain screamed at me to return to my car. I quickly popped the batteries out of the alarm and hopped back into my car as the silence returned to the orchards. As I was reversing out of the spot, my headlights bathed the trees in light again, and the same similar shape was now three or four rows closer, and this time it seemed to crouch down behind a tree. I sat there for a moment longer staring into the void before my brain screeched, what if there's more and this is the distraction? That thought encouraged me to back up onto the high part of the ladder, and there I waited for the next three and a half hours alone. It felt torturous, like a thousand eyes were burrowing into every square inch of my car and soul from every angle. The quietness of an orchard is something very unsettling in the winter time, as there are no insects or wildlife wandering about. All I could hear was silence and my pounding heart for the next three and a half hours of my shift. I almost wanted some monster to come tearing through the trees bellowing out, ha ha ha, here I am, here to eat you. But instead I saw and heard nothing more. My morning shifter shows up late and starts casually drinking his hot cup of coffee as I give him the rundown while the sun starts to peek into the sky. I still remember the steam trail from his mug and the chirping of early birds as we decided to investigate further into the orchards. We ended up at the spot where I saw the figure, and after some quick scanning, he ended up spotting some really large footprints from boots that seemed to pace back and forth in a line along one row of trees. We then tracked them as they led forward towards the worker's office container and abruptly stopped near a tree while still a few rows back. Nothing more, no follow-up footprints leading forward or backwards. No vehicle tracks leading out of the dirt. No one could have gotten past me without trudging through the orchard. It was as if someone appeared, paced back and forth in a line for a few hours, walked forward, and then just disappeared without another step. We reported it to the boss, and he shrugged it off, saying maybe it was an elaborate prank by the construction workers, but that was one of the last shifts I worked doing security. Definitely made me more of a believer in the paranormal kind of things. There are times when I'll be jamming out to music and I'll feel the vibrations of someone walking through the house, and I'll remove one of my earphones and listen for anything and ask if my sister or dad is home. It's a 50-50 chance that I'll get a reply back or not, so I learn to ignore it and go back to jamming out to music and working. But the stuff that screws me up the most is when I get a tug on my hoodie and I have to pull my hoodie back so I'm not choking, only to have it get tugged again. Sometimes I'll hear someone call my name, and I'll look around and ask them, what? and I'll never get a reply, doesn't help, I'm home alone often. I'm pretty sure everyone sees something run by in the corner of their eye, but what you don't see every day is someone poking their head out of your room in the dark and running in and out of your room. Sometimes all the lights in my room will flicker, and I'll ask whoever is doing that to stop, and it just randomly stops, and I'm always like, uh, thanks? I'm just confused half of the time. There was one time I woke up randomly in the night to a painting my sister did, flying off my wall and onto the floor. So, like a normal person, I get up and put it back on my wall, scroll on my phone for a bit, and try to go back to sleep. Apparently any time I try to go back to sleep, the painting will fly off the wall again, I didn't get to sleep till 6am. Another instance is when I woke up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, and there was a random old lady just standing there. I just turned around and just walked back to my room. I'll never forget the sight of her just standing in the shadows of the bathroom, staring back at me. I couldn't see her face that well since it was dark, but I could tell it was an old woman, not the best of nights. I see this random cat in the house when I pass by doorways. I have three other cats in the house, but none of them have this ginger tan coat. I would always back up and look into the room to see nothing there and just shrug it off as my imagination. Only seen it two to three times. I'm pretty sure it's my pet cat's brother or sister that my dad accidentally hit with his car when I was little. I think it was my aunt that caused the house to get haunted since she played an Ouija board in my sister's room before either one of us was born. She still refuses to sleep in that room after a nightmare she had in there. It doesn't help that she said a black hooded figure ran at her before she woke up because when I slept in there, in the corner of that stupid room is just a random shadow person with a hood, staring at me and slowly moving around the room. I woke up once with the thing standing directly over me while my sister slept on the bottom bunk. I just sort of waved at it and stared at it for a bit before I went back to sleep. I saw it most nights I slept in that room and just shrugged it off for me being tired until my aunt told that story. I don't know, I just learned to live with this, and it's been a part of my life for ages. My sisters hate the paranormal, 
and they always make jokes about me befriending random ghosts in the house. My dad saw the one that literally runs in and out of my room and had a full-blown freak out when I texted him to keep the door open, so the ghost can just run in and out of my room. He ended up sleeping at my stepmother's house that weekend I was gone. It was pretty funny to me, but he was pretty terrified. I work nights at a hotel, and part of it is setting up coffee in the morning. Before COVID, that took place at 3 a.m. So I was looking for the tea box. The cabinets where it might be kept are facing directly into the kitchen. There's a buffet bar and a locked door between guest space and the kitchen. Everything is very dark except for the light pouring into the kitchen from the back hallway. And that's where I see him. There's a man there watching me. He's about six and a half feet tall and wearing an olive green jacket. We spent a long minute staring at each other, until suddenly he lifted both legs at the knees and floated out of the kitchen into the hall. I didn't initially think ghost. I thought guess. I chased him through the locked door into the back hallway and spent five minutes searching for him, getting angrier and angrier that some asshole was hiding back here. I never found him. And it took me a little while to accept why. People don't just float, people don't just vanish. Either I had met a god-tier magician or this was a freaking ghost. There's been a few ghost sightings at the hotel since then, but that's the one I always find myself coming back to.